Man, I have to say, it feels so nice to walk into this shop and it just feels so organized now. And then it's just stuff in its place. Look at how there's just no clutter. I mean, there's like a few things left we gotta tidy up, but just so much room for activities. Oh, it makes me so happy. So satisfying. Oh, I love organization. I'm such a nerd. All right, we have our damper. We have our new F-Body damper. Super, super stoked. Huge, huge thanks to Aviad for sending this out so quickly. So we're ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the swap. You guys, if you saw the last video, you already saw this whole process. So pretty simple. Just gotta pull that damper off, put the new one on. And once we get back to this point, we'll uh, pick it up there and start finishing the rest of the stuff. But the goal for today, get it all wrapped up, engine wrapped up in the subframe, wherever the subframe is. Clutch on, trans on, put it in the car. That is, that is my goal, optimistic goal. Very hyped, very hyped guys. Fingers crossed that everything goes well today. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We're gonna be optimistic, optimistic Taylor today, all right? <laughs> Let's get to it. Ta-da! We're back to where we started, but with the correct damper this time. So that's sick. I'm hyped. Everything fits up really nice, which is awesome. I uh, checked with the alternator, pulley lines up. We are good to go. Now we can move on to the next project. So we are right on track, guys. We get this thing in the car this evening. So yeah, next step, uh, oil pan. Easy peasy. I shouldn't say that. Shouldn't say that. Take it back. All right, we got our oil pan gasket, oil pan bolts, oil pan. Uh, I'm not gonna go too in depth, but basically this is our dry sump pan. So a normal wet sump pan, it's under there. Uh, it has a sump, so it goes down way further. Um, and then you have a pickup tube that goes down to the sump, sucks the oil up through the oil pump, which would be here, and then pumps it through the motor. So for us, since we have a dry sump, when our oil drains back to the pan, our pump, our scavenge pump is sucking and it sucks the oil out, pumps it back to the tank, comes back into the pump and the pump pumps it whoosh, well, over here, to the oil port, through the motor, drains back, back to the pan. So that is why we have this super shallow pan, which is rad for us for ground clearance because with this car, with this motor, pan, swap kit, etc., the pan hangs down about an inch below the subframe and this one's like two inches, three inches above the subframe. So we do not have to worry about bashing our pan on something, which is huge because that'll ruin your day. <laughs> bashing your pan on something will ruin Ruin your day, especially if you don't catch it in time and you lose oil pressure because you lose all your oil. Not good, not good. Ask me how I know. <laughs> all right, so yeah, basically all we gotta do, oh, I'm getting a phone call. Dude, is this just like a Florida thing or have scam calls become way more popular? Okay, uh, is there like a law that changed? Like, I don't know, I get like 10 a day or more. So you got these corners here where your front and rear covers meet up to your block. This is the only spot you need to RTV on each of these like corners, just so that it seals that crack up. And then gasket pan, super simple. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Neighbor Al, what did you think of the drone? Nice. I showed them <laughs> me messing with you with the drone and they said you were, you were burning bodies in your barrel. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're not burning bodies out, don't worry. Don't you know, worry. Who cares, leave Al alone. That's true. Call the governor, he, he's gonna hear from me next week anyway. What about Morgan and Morgan? No, I was lying. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. All right, well, my camera wasn't recording, but uh, I put the oil pan on. I got to torque all the bolts down, but that's okay. You guys have seen, I mean, it's an oil pan. <laughs> See you later, Al. Drive safe, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Safe drive. All right, well, the pan is on. Man, I gotta say, like, it looks so sick to see the pan on there with the nice zinc plated hardware, like all the fittings on the pump and everything. I can't wait to see it with the lines made. We are gonna wait, like I said, to do the lines until we get it in the subframe. So we'll get it in the subframe, make these two lines, and then we'll put it in the car. Cause I'll need to make the feed and return and the high pressure stuff all in the car. But at least these two we can make with it in the subframe so we know where like our clearances it are, but out of the car, so it shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, I don't know, just seeing these parts sitting on a shelf for like probably a month or two now, and, and then to see them like on the engine and it complete with the damper, the pump, the fittings, the pan, like, ah, oh, it just looks so sick. It looks so sick. So we'll get her in the subframe and make our lines and then get her in the car. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So don't, don't worry too much. Uh, that's uh, everybody's. Uh, somebody's interested in everything. 
and anything you can be interested in, you'll find others will. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like. is in the subframe so now we are going to tackle these two lines it's definitely tight because the steering racks right there and that first fittings real close uh, I don't know I don't know I'm gonna figure this out and start making them <laughs> I'm still kind of on the fence about how I want to do it but we got the lines done it was a little tricky man because basically I'm trying to hold the light and have a hand to show you guys stuff oh no no so like especially this line because uh, it's so short it goes from there to right there. It was just really tough. I had to get the length exactly perfect. Normally I just make them a little long so I have some extra. With these you have to make them perfectly the right length because there's just not enough length to be able to like flex them around. Um, this one was a little easier because it goes all the way to the back back there. But regardless, all in all, these Deechworks fittings are really nice and really easy to work with. They match up like so perfectly to their line. Definitely recommend if you're doing like a PTFE line, make sure you buy the same brand line and fittings. It needs to be like the perfect tolerances to get everything to work correctly. So the, the Deechworks went better, went together better, much better. <laughs> it sounds corny, but like see what it looks, would look like on the stand with the lines. But we are past that point, brothers. So time to throw the flywheel on, pressure plate, etc. Put the trans on, accessories, intake manifold, and then. Up in the car. That's the plan, Stanley's. Dude, what kind of timing is this? I see you pulling in, and then Grafton shows up at the same time. That's kind of, they both came from very, very different places and showed up at the exact same time. What's up, dude? Oh, <laughs> major problem that I did not show you guys last night. I realized before I went to put my clutch on, no pilot bushing because these are like press fit for the Collins kit. It's like a press fit brass pilot bushing. So there is no way to get that out. But I'm used to just pulling them out of my old crank, putting them in the new one. Uh, so AJ, freaking hero. I got to three of them. Oh, oh, dang. Well, slash Brett. So Brett had them on hand. AJ drove all the way down to Sarasota to go get them. Yeah, AJ is the hero of the day. We have the parts we need. We can put the uh, clutch and trans on and all that stuff which I'm stoked. When I realized that, I was like, dude, I can't wait another week to work on this thing again. Like, I can't, I can't do it. And then I was like, AJ, what are you, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> are you busy tomorrow? All right, so yeah, we gotta get to work. So I'm letting one of the pilot bushings freeze so that uh, hopefully it'll shrink up some and be easier to install. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and throw as many, well, all the accessories on. Cut a square piece of wood that fits in here nice so we can hammer the bushing in and get it as far in as possible. I've got it in the freezer, so I'm gonna go grab it out and just try to knock it out. Oh, I'm gonna grease this up too. I'm gonna clean this up in here, grease it up, give us the best chance possible to get it in first dry. It was a little bit of a struggle last time. All right, so I was a lot smarter this time when I did this. I used this brush, got it in there, and was able to like clean up all of the inside there, all the little rustiness. And then I put a white layer of lube, froze the bushing for about, what do you say, an hour? Yeah, probably an hour. An hour, went right in like butter. And I got it all the way in, whereas I never was able to get my old one all the way in. 
which I mean, it worked fine, but all in all, 10 out of 10 times easier than the first time I did it. It's all stressing about it and it was fine. So now clutch and trans. Trans is on, it was definitely a fight. <laughs> it's funny with putting a trans on it, it's either goes on like nothing or it's a complete fight. And this one was a bit of a fight, but we got it in. Let's put the starter on. It's kind of a tight fit with the fitting to the pan, but it's on there, it's solid. Now, the only thing I have left to do, I need to drop the car down. I put the shift boot on in the inside and the hole's not big enough, so I don't wanna fight that trying to drop the car down. So I'm gonna just pull it off so the shifter can go up and do its own thing. The two, two really tough things that we're gonna face here. Thing number one, uh, these bolts. Getting this bolt and this bolt in. Um, it's just really hard to line all four of these up with the studs too. The other thing, the hardest thing, is gonna be getting the steering shaft on as we guide the subframe up. It's hard enough to get it off, let alone get it back on. So that will definitely be a struggle. But once we get those two things done and the subframe bolted in, it's all pretty easy from there. Easy peasy, not cake, easy peasy. Ben's got his white castles. White castles he's, for dude. He's white castling it up. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess let's get to it. All right, Grafton. <laughs> Alright, so Skeletor is tightening the... <laughs> you did it to yourself, buddy. Skeletor is tighten the, tightening the uh, subframe bolt. Ben is changing out the steering shaft because... Show him the problem, Ben. So just show him what this one does. Oh, so this one articulates. It, it's, it slides in and out, which is what allows you to like basically get it the... Get it, you can slide it all the way in, get the U-joint in, and slide it down, whereas mine is like for somehow it Some got idiot fucking... put a pry bar between it oh and that's what we did i don't know who did that <laughs> <laughs> so it bent it in on itself so it cannot telescope at all so we've got to change it out i mean we're getting there it's been a bit of a process we've been an hour and a half fighting with the steering shaft and then finally ben was like we should just change it so that's where we're at so yeah always fun stuff fun stuff and then we we're gonna take the steering rack out so we could just put the steering rack in with the motor in but the dry sump pump sits right above the steering rack, so there's no way to take the steering rack out with the dry sump pump on. So just it's just it's always something. That's one thing that is that sucks about like cars like this, like a built car. It's not engineered for a dry sump pump to be in this subframe with these motor mounts with this steering rack. Like it's not designed to work together. So you gotta like there's always challenges. Long story short. But I'm not complaining. Not complaining. What do you think, Grafton? I think we're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> the engine is in the car. Not without a fight, man. Not without a fight. Those two things that I told you were gonna be hard, were hard. The back bolts 
Had Grafton and AJ like pushing on the thing while we had it in the air and the bolts loose trying to get it to slide back. Steering shaft still not back in, but like I said, Ben came up with an ingenious plan and hopefully putting it back in is smooth because we'll be able to just kind of shoot past the header. The problem is with the header, when the engine's higher, it pushes the steering shaft over more. So it's like as you drop it down, it can swing over and go into place correctly. But when it's when it's up, it can't basically. Anyway, engines in the car look sick. Hold on, let's put the intake manifold on. <laughs> Just set it on there and make it look more official. There we go, intake manifold's on. Check it out. Woo, motor's done. Let's fire her up. Let's do some burnouts. Hell yeah. We're done. I like your cinematic shots, Crafton. What's up, bro? I gotta figure out how to use this thing. <laughs> the thing looks funny when it's moving because it's like... Rrr, rrr. All right, guys. Well, that is gonna be it for this video. Tomorrow, me and Ben are gonna tackle this and hopefully next video... Actually, next video will probably be dry sump lines. Then running. So, uh, like this video if you're hyped to see me on back on track. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.